as the background of, from management uh, perspective is important that we all uh, use background stories in our classes to attract to engage to interact with students i always start my lecture with a story okay. even today i'll be starting with my own story uh, a little very briefly because yesterday uh, we were sitting together a uh, few colleagues uh, i'm not going to name uh, they are they're not here dr atar dr ishtiaq shabbir <laughs> uh, dr atik and uh, they they all mentioned that hamza please take as much time as possible <laughs> and i was telling them i'll take only 15 20 minutes no take as much time we don't want another session uh, today so uh, uh, and dr zahir this morning he mentioned that hamza please do something that i can sleep long <laughs> okay. so uh, so he was mentioning he mentioned twice that and uh, dr basu the professor dr basu he also said that I'll, i'm sitting with dr zahir so please Make sure that I see better. Okay. <laughs> Now, as just I'm just reflecting back on my lecture as well. In my class, I use uh, sarcasm. I use some jokes. I tease students as well, but in a funny way, just to get some interaction with them. I just had some interaction with already mentioning few names. Uh, Dr. Adnan. is a uh, uh, actually may, may follow my talk today may follow i'm not sure whether he follow or not but he may follow and his talk is on student engagement with mr shabbi my colleague shabbi and uh, shabbi mentioned that what presentation they are doing today and it's a very funny way that uh, they the, the, he mentioned one word, uh, i think so one thing that is like yesterday total slides were 50 of dr rashid's talk and today dr narayan shabbi said that we have 90 slides okay uh, so with 90 slides they have in the powerpoint the funny part is just one slide saying that 90 slides <laughs> and after that they will just engage with this audience <clears throat> so my background uh, not many people actually know it although i have been here uh, for a little long time I call myself as a, a multicultural kid. I call myself a multicultural kid in a way that I was born in Kuwait, lived there for four years, and then moved to Pakistan with my family. And then in Pakistan, I did my uh, some education, and then I went to UK. I stayed there in UK for a little over close to eight years. and in those eight years i actually moved to three different places namely first place was started in wales princes of wales and many people know uh cardiff is one of the one of the good universities in uk uh, ranked uh, uh, 31st out of 135 universities in uk so 31 is the ranking of cardiff stayed there lived there worked there in cardiff and then i moved to surrey Surrey University. Uh, it's in Guildford. Now, a Gil, uh, Surrey University is ranked. I think so. Recently, with the research that they're doing, ranked seventh in UK. Stayed there, lived there, worked there, uh, learned a lot of things from there in Surrey. And then I got opportunity to study at Oxford University. Surrey Business. Uh, Oxford Business School. and uh, i i took a course over there uh, that was actually an inspire study university nine weeks long course on entrepreneurship technology and entrepreneurship so i actually coming from a background where the really professionalism when it comes to teaching uh but when you come here uh i i left uk at in 2012 so when you come here I, and i joined this college in november 2012 so when when i am coming here it was little kind of a, a shock more than a shock uh, reason the students in the students there have different concept i give you another example of student concept which comes from uh, a kg class 
uh, one of our school, uh, colleagues just walked in, Dr. Arthur. He told me a uh, few weeks back. Uh, no, no, stay. This is interaction, so I have to take some notes. <laughs> so do, do, Dr. Arthur mentioned that uh, uh, he has martial arts three kids and the youngest, uh, she's in KG2, I think. Yeah. So before, uh, she, he was mentioning that next day is exam day and this, the teacher of this KG2 student is sending all students' mothers SMS or a WhatsApp message saying that these are the questions, please ask them to prepare for tomorrow's exam. So this is like a KG2 level. So he's saying that, yeah, we received the same WhatsApp message and my wife was astonished, well, really? <laughs> we prepare these questions and for tomorrow's exam for them, final exam, like a strange setup. So I can guess not all but few do come in our college with the same thing. So it's very it gets difficult. It gets difficult uh, how we, especially when it when I am coming from a UK background where a 70 percent is a distinction, more than 70 you're outstanding, and over here you have to give 96 to 96 percent people in the class. <laughs> so it's like everyone wants A and A plus. Now, uh, in my class, uh, what I uh, normally start with, student interaction for me, I actually make my own definitions for things. I don't go to dictionary, but I make my own definitions. And for last uh, three semesters, I think so, 80 or more than 80 percent in my classes, I don't use slides at all. I stop using PowerPoint slides. And there, there is a reason of not using PowerPoint slides. Even today, I'm not using PowerPoint slides because I, I want to do something which I normally do in class. Prior to that, yes, I was using PowerPoint slides. I was using lots of slides in my class. Once I have did 50 slides as well, which are boring. Uh, people don't like it. And if you have one tone, they 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 they'll sleep. Doctor Zai is not sleeping. <laughs> Uh, so, for me, the student uh, uh, interaction definition is simply about student participation. So, uh, you need to make them participate. By just naming or calling some student's name, they started participating. So, I just called a few names and they are participating. Zishan came and he said, Hamza, do you want to, your uh, talk to be recorded? I said, uh, I don't know, man. The camera location is not good. Yesterday, they recorded Dr. Rashid, and it was a very long one, uh, compre uh, compressing time and everything. So anyways, so, so uh, student pa class participation, that means student interaction. And by participation, as an instructor, as a facilitator, as a counselor, as a mentor, because now our role has been evolved. I'm also a mentor, I'm also a counselor, I'm a facilitator. Uh, in my emails, when I'm replying back to students, I'm say instructor. Uh, teacher role has been evolved in the past uh, 20 years. So student participation suggests that they're understanding the topic. A sense of understanding is there for them. Now, second thing I do in my class is I ask questions uh, immediately cold feed questions are asked. Uh, I thought that if Dr. Khalid was here, I would ask him some questions. Because this semester, he was saying that Hamza, you did a very good job with students. I don't know, I want to ask him what type of good job I did. Because we all know, no one received evaluation sheets. <laughs> uh, no one received. So I wanted to ask him what good I did. Are you telling because if you have seen evaluation sheet. Dr. Khalid Abura already started. And I remember Dr. Khalid Abura also remember, uh, I think so my first or second semester, we had a, a hard talk as well. I had a hard talk with Dr. Khalid Abura and he had a hard talk with me. But I think so the passage of time in like uh, so many semesters in between, now he says that I'm, uh, we are very good together. We talk before the program. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, we don't want to I remember. Always like to. Yeah, wait. We always want to have a positive event. So, uh, what type of questions I, I ask in my class? What type of questions I ask in my class? 
very basic, intriguing questions. Because I, I I teach first year, I teach second year, and I also teach fourth year, depending on the course that is given to us. <laughs> and uh, we are, in management, management I think is the backbone of the whole degree. Whether it's MIS degree, accounting, or uh, finance, it's a backbone. And we teach all the students in our group. So the first question is, why they join University of the Mark? Uh, it's an intriguing question that everyone can answer. Whether they they have an answer, or they were forced to come here, they were forced to select a business school. They wanted to do like engineering or medical, but marks and everything. So such question is one one such question is there. How many of them like to have A and A plus in class? <coughs> okay. So majority, especially the female side, majority would say. We all want A and A plus in our class. And then uh, from their answer, because whenever I'm asking a question, I know in my mind what type of answers I will receive. So uh, uh, in, when, when I'm giving them an answer, especially for A and A plus, I use three key words. Uh, and I think so these are three key letters, sorry. Letters are very important. I write. In, in whiteboard, first letter is K, second is S, and third is A. K S A. And then I ask them, what do you think this means? So, Dr. Atta mentioned King of Sodia. Anyone from female? What does this mean? K S A. Their evaluation will be based on the principles, policies, given by KSA. So what these KSA letters mean? <coughs> Dr. Tessa is saying King of Saudi Arabia. I think the majority of the people think that it is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But not. it's not that. It's Kingdom of South Africa. <laughs> kingdom of South Africa. South Africa is not a kingdom. <laughs> so, uh, so KSA uh, is basically 1958 Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, it's basically knowledge, skills, and attitude. I have to explain them that in my class, if uh, if you want to do well, uh, you have to show me your knowledge. You have to show that you have learned some skills in my class, <coughs> and how you sh actually display it, how you operate in your assignments, in your projects. That's an attitude I want to see. If I see all these three things, KSA, uh, then I'll, of course, you'll deserve. You first deserve, then desire. That's my, my father used to say. First deserve, then desire. So KSA. So I tell them these things. And they are like already intrigued. Whoa, this is coming from a different perspective. Not A and A plus. It's coming from a different perspective altogether. So uh, first thing I mentioned, I ask questions. Four, three questions I do ask them. But questions which they can answer easy not the subject oriented question but because I have to come up with a story uh, then yesterday uh, Dr. Ashish mentioned I, as I, I already mentioned that I will be reflecting back on his talk Dr. Ashish mentioned Sir Ken Robinson's talk on education creativity I watched that talk roughly around 8 years ago it is an old talk Ken Robinson. Now, uh, the elements of that talk I still remember. Even I watched it uh, eight years ago, I still remember the elements or components of his talk. It was uh, about suggesting that education must not be a factory. Like from class one, class two, class three, class four, class five. It's like a factory working. It's all that a factory is working. So education has become a factory generating the end product but this end product is different because intelligence is different dr. Bass is already speaking and so he's actually <laughs> uh, he did what he mentioned huh? so Ken Robinson was on that issue creativity you have to make something creative in classes uh, you have to in, uh, somehow engage students now in the past so keeping that in mind the British standard that I had uh, with me and uh, Ken Robinson, seven, eight years ago, I watched. Uh, and the best education in the world 
If uh, if you're not familiar, the best education in the world has been declared for last five years, at least given by uh, Finland, uh, Singapore, and I think so uh, South Korea. Uh, if you follow these institutions, education institutions, these are the best in the world. Uh, the topping is uh, Finland. Finland is like topping them because from the very beginning they start looking at their kids. Uh, the, even the degree process hold is different, not like ours. Now, uh, in my classes, I every semester I experiment. Every semester I'm experimenting to interact with students. It's not that uh, I write poems. I because yesterday uh, when Dr. Ashok was giving a talk here, uh, Zishan, I know a few of you will be, uh, know Zishan. And Dr. Atik, he's a funny guy. Uh, they, they actually <laughs> said that Hamza, to topple Dr. Arshad talk, you have to dance on the stage. You have to do something to topple his his talk. Otherwise, no way. <laughs> so, what did you mean by fun? <laughs> I thought that, that I was not imagining that he would say you have to dance on the stage. To make sure that people forget Dr. Ashad's talk, and so, uh, so I, I, as Dr. Ashad do lots of things in his class, we all try our best to do lots of things, uh, participation. So uh, uh, in my class, I introduce every every semester I'm doing something new. Like for example, this semester I'm not going back. I, this semester I started uh, uh, with a revision. I just give you an example of uh, a group revision that I started. Because it's interaction, we have to make them participate. So group revision, for example, we, I, I make small groups in my classes. Uh, normally, I teach a lot of students, so five or six students are in the group, and there are seven groups in the class. Let's say you have five chapters to revise very quickly. So uh, not a traditional way that an instructor stands. And what I do, I actually uh, make the groups in class. Then I ask them, you have 30 minutes. Each group will prepare one chapter. If there are five chapters, six chapters, each group is given one one chapter. 35 minutes, revise the whole chapter notes that I've given you. So in 30, after 30 minutes, what happens is one by one, each group comes and they have to present in seven minutes. The deadline is seven minutes. Uh, so every group comes here and they present their chapter in seven minutes. So they summarize. If they miss something, I actually give them the points that you missed this, 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 this. So in next next 30 minutes, uh, the whole revision is there from them. The concept of social learning is important. Or uh, the, wherever we use the term group or teams, then we call it a cooperative learning. We learn to cooperation. So they, they learn from themselves, actually. As an experiment, um, I, I, I can ask how, uh, how many of you actually ask students to actually prepare their exams themselves, exam papers themselves? Anyone did that? Asking students to prepare their questions for the exam. Like, uh, once experimenting, then never. Sorry? Self test questions? Self test questions? Yes. Okay, because once you know, once we experimented that, they from they insisted that put these questions in it. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I did uh, a long time ago, uh, I stopped doing it, but I still did it as an experiment. I asked them that your midterm exam is coming, uh, like three weeks to midterm, and I asked them uh, in my class again. I divided the groups. And each person in, a, in that group ha needs to prepare one chapter. Let's say the six groups, six chapters by one group. And you have to submit me at least two questions per person, two questions about that chapter. So there are like five, six groups. You'd have a pool of test bank. And then a uh, test bank was there for me, already created by students. And what I did, I was teaching like four, five sections. Then I circulated all that test bank. And I asked them, they were like roughly around let's say 200 questions in total that I had of the test bank. 
and I told them your paper will be coming from these 200 questions and what happened from those 200 questions I just gave like 15 or 20 questions I gave in the exam and the reason of doing that was as an instructor I want them to learn the subject so from 200 questions they actually learned everything they prepared yeah we prepared these questions and this com paper is coming from this so prepare preparation was from this so I, I do such experiments regularly so that one example was group revision another example I started with a uh, group quiz and this happened because uh, when I'm teaching females I teach both males and females so when, when I'm teaching females the thing is we don't have TA there uh, teacher assistant we do receive emails that you have to tell us a week or two weeks prior to your quiz and stuff like that uh, so I started doing the group, uh, group quiz again the concept was I used to bring a case in the class uh, three four cases each group will have different cases in their hands and they will have a set of questions give them 25 minutes to read the case answer the questions within the group and then present in my class the quiz is only one minute or two minutes uh, uh, two marks quiz so it's one mark or two marks quiz so <clears throat> that trend has been set I think so for group taking group quizzes regularly with the females regularly and I do the same with the boys now uh, now <clears throat> another thing to interact with students I use blackboard uh, or uh, you can say that it's an e-learning tool so you have to uh, use it very nicely I think so a uh, few over here uh, male side they know that being the first person to actually s asking Dr. Khalid again and again uh, like three years ago please use we need blackboard we need blackboard so eventually we our college had blackboard I did quizzes on blackboard regular uh, reason that I can't I don't want to have quizzes in hand it will take the immense time to mark everything so in blackboard you did finish the quiz results are already there you save time you have uh, you have to like spend few for some time to prepare them but the results comes instantly so I use blackboard for quizzes I use blackboard for discussion as well Again, the discussion that uh, I, I give on Blackboard is very intriguing, thought-provoking, not subject, uh, it, it is kind of subject-related. How many of you received an email from academic affairs suggesting, or I don't know, let's say advising not to use test bank? Uh, now, I actually circulated a discussion on Blackboard with my students asking them is it ethical to use test bank I was teaching business ethics course so I actually circulated a talk on a discussion forum lots of students said that it's ethical one has to <laughs> we have to some students few students a percentage of five or ten percent they're saying that it's cheating uh, it's cheating kind of cheating but majority was saying that test bank is a good uh, way of to revise such topics revise a chapter so why why not to use test I give you an example uh, I think so two years ago uh, I was teaching uh, boys and girls one subject and in the midterm I used test bank completely that time so in the midterm I was surprised to see the results boys shattered with the results uh, and the girls all A's out of 20 uh, the average was 18.5 and I was like how how this happened when I was in uh, I was a student I never heard the word test bank or test food never when I come to Saudi Arabia this is the first time I'm introduced to test banks so so uh, I immediately I, I it was coming to mind Dr. Ishtiak mentioned and few others mentioned Hamza they have this somehow uh, they have the, the test bank, they buy it or something like that. It's available online, they can subscribe and get access to it. I think so, a few students have the password of Pearson. We use normally Pearson. No, no, they subscribe actually, they buy it. Very good, <laughs> they buy it. So, uh, and I, so I, in, in my class I asked the female, how many of you have test banks? Very clearly I asked them, how many of you have test banks? 
and few and many said no we don't have test and uh, <laughs> so i asked the same question to the boys and the boys answered what what is what <laughs> really what test bank what is uh, why what so boys was like this so uh, I, what i did i uh, changed the name of test bank as revision notes and i put it on on blackboard for the final exam and i told them for e every chapter i put that deliberately for every chapter as revision notes on that and a few st a few females in, in class after the class they get doctor it seems that it's like a test bank is it a test bank uh, how do you know it's a test bank uh, because we got it from seniors seniors had it yeah. okay really now uh, boys the uh, majority of the boys said that we don't have a clue what is a test bank what do you mean by test bank but few of them have uh, female sisters yeah? and they had test bank so they are getting good score but majority is not getting good score so one of, one or two students actually came to my office boys and they said doctor you said that uh, you're not going to use test bank but you uploaded a test bank how do you know that is a test bank anyway the find the final exam the total turn around happened i used the test bank but the female this time thought that i'm not going to use test bank so the results of boys were like really topped and the girls were like <laughs> average so it's surprising that the female did not actually follow it properly for the final exam this time they thought that now the teacher has given the whole transparency they will not take any questions so that's like a example of using blackboard discussions quizzes and uh, some kind of tricks i do and uh, lots of instructors on the mail side actually came to me and said that how you do a quiz online what are the conditions that you put what are the things i actually uh, tell most of them i i told them uh, in this uh, semester uh, for interaction thing uh, i was teaching business communication as well and somehow i i, I i'm a teacher I, and I tell in my class uh, students as well that if I don't know the subject, I tell them I don't know the subject, but I will try my best because this subject I have never taken in my ed academic uh, education. Uh, business communication is one of the subjects that I have never taken myself when I was a student, undergrad level or a master's level. However, now the dean, Dr. Khalid, thinks that there is no one else better somehow. Uh, to teach this course, okay, uh, that's a challenge as well at the same time, the opportunity at the same time. And uh, so this time around, when I was teaching business communication, I introduced few new things. Uh, first thing that I actually introduced was a hashtag on Twitter. So I, I, I basically I started realizing. Sorry. This is the course that. Uh, which course? The business yeah, process. never, and ever. Then it was given to you, and then you just you accepted the challenge. Yep. And now you, when you know, about that, you produce so many things. But during your tips, how do you think that what you can produce? Yes. That's what I, I may already mentioned. No, the Dr. Khalid thinks that I'm one of the best instructors to teach this course. Uh, okay? <coughs> so that's like a dean is saying it. So. Uh, and of course, you always look for student feedback. Anyway, so I introduced the Web 2.0. We call it Web 2.0, the social media. How are you using social media in classes? I realized from some uh, since last semester that announcement reach students first before it comes to the instructors. Students are telling me the date of an uh, midterm has been announced, the date of final exam has been announced. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and we are, we are far away from these announcements. So how do you know that this is happening? Uh, through Twitter. Okay, really. Uh, I, I, I made an account on Twitter like three, four years ago, but I would never used that regularly. Uh, or maybe more than that. Uh, so I, I actually went back to my account. I lost my password, so password resets and everything was there. So I created a hashtag 
uh, for my subjects that I was teaching, both business communication and business development. I created a hashtag. And at the same time, the announcements of Dr. Khalid, Dr. Adil, and Dr. Rasul, all three deans were coming regularly on Twitter. Not on notice posts, not on emails, but on Twitter. That all three deans actually use Twitter a lot for announcing very fast. Every day, I think so, five or five tweets are there on average for all these things. And luckily, Twitter introduced this translate from Arabic. So one can translate easily. So the hashtag was there, and uh, it had a different meaning to it, this hashtag that I used. This was deliberate. I thought that I would do it. Okay, the hashtag was UOD underscore BC1, that was business communication one. And another hashtag was UOD underscore ethics. Underscore ethics that I used. Now, these hashtags what were ethics? underscore ethics because I was teaching ethics course. So, hashtag was created, and whenever I used to go to the <laughs> I don't know what's the funny part there. It's good. So, uh, so, so whenever I used to go to the class, I, I used to write on the corner this hashtags in my class. And so, from the very beginning, students started start ask, "Why are you doing this?" I I told them uh, in the past two weeks there were like uh, lots of talks on uh, reports, specifications, NC AAA. Now I can say that national this frame, qualification framework. I will write that in my CV. I know that. Okay, national qualification framework. Uh, learning outcomes. Uh, the, the talk was about reports, specification, learning outcome. So I told my students for every class, whatever you take from my class, tweet about it. One tweet per person. Tweet about it. And they, they, they were asking us that, okay, using this hash, these hashtags, take away anything from my class, per class, and write something about it. They will do it in English, that's the first time, for especially for the boys. Uh, I don't know about the females, but they will do it for the first time in English. So they will write something. They will start going into the dictionary. They will try to make sure that the spellings are correct. Or they will copy something from the whiteboard and I'm writing. Uh, so uh, it's good that they will do something. Same time, how many of you write in your syllabus document smartphones are not allowed in class? In our syllabus document, it's written very clearly smartphones. I actually removed that line from my <laughs> syllabus document because I think that it's a smartphone, must be used smartly in class. So, uh, because as a communication teacher, I was telling them dictionary, open the dictionary. You have to open the dictionary. At the same time, whatever you learn in the class, hashtag Twitter. So if I see boys doing something uh, on the uh, mobile phone, smartphones, they have, so we are just tweeting what you said. <laughs> so that's like a good thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they show me immediately. And the best part was next day, next day they came and they said that you did not like our tweet. Okay, so I start, especially the females, they were saying that we tweeted, but you're not liking our tweets. And it's like, oh, okay. So I started reading all the tweets as well. So it's like, 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 they, they know that I'm following them. Because I told them, end of the semester, I will be going through all your tweets and you will be getting a mark for that. Because especially female students, they say that, why we do that, we need something. Okay, you will be getting a one mark. Okay, one mark. So how you will track who is who? You know, the ideas are different. So what I did, uh, another thing of interaction, uh, how many of you, when you're taking attendance, take signatures of students? All of you, right? All of us take signatures from students while in attendance sheet. Today, the attendance is not being circulated, right? If you do, everybody will sign it. No one has and never in the class. So, so you, you have to take it by yourself. I announce the name. Okay. Uh, rare case. Rare case. <laughs> uh, Dr. Kamran also do the same. So 
rare case, but they don't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then no need to take. They, everybody has that. So they find for each other. So what I did uh, in my tendency, I rather than writing signatures, I write present in brackets P and uh, absent or A. I, th I, I have those columns there. And addition to that column, I said Twitter ID. So they were supposed to write the Twitter ID as well. So uh, if, for example, I pass on the tenant sheet as a tradition, they will sign. And I, uh, I will make a comment with the little student that, does it say signatures here? It says something else. So it says part of participation interaction, how, how they are connected with me. So uh, they have to write P. That's it. Don't spend time in scribbling. I don't write your scribbles. You're cutting. This is my signature. I don't know what is this. Okay. I, I, I stop them from doing this. Write P plus. Okay. So this is like uh, intriguing them to do something slightly different. So Twitter ID was there. I had all the Twitter IDs. So it was not that I was following them rigorously. I was just making sure that they are tweeting every day for ethics and business communication. So even if right now, if anyone wants to go and hashtag BC1, all tweets, you will see lots of them. Hundreds of tweets are there related to my lectures that I've been giving for 15 weeks or business ethics or business communication. So much so, I use it to announce, start announcing as well. Before announcing on Blackboard uh, of anything that I'm doing in the course, I used to hashtag this tweet very quickly. Once I, I remember the middle of the semester, Dr. Khalid and we crossed each other. It's very uh, rare to see my chairman, Dr. Khalid. So uh, we crossed, and uh, the Dr. Khalid said, uh, I, I, I know that you're doing a lot on uh, Twitter these days. So because I followed him, he followed me back. Dr. Adil same, Dr. Asini same. So whatever I tweet, they, they, it comes on their tweets as well. So it, they are actually interacting with students at the same time. So th that's like an, another example of using Web 2.0. WhatsApp groups are always there. Uh, students create their WhatsApp group. Instructors actually create WhatsApp group. I created this hashtag. I think the same thing did by Ms. Razan. She here? Ms. Razan actually created a Twitter account on communication. So they were up, the students were uploading lots of things on Twitter account. Now, uh, that's another thing. Now, uh, last thing that I wanted to actually mention here is Dr. Arshad yesterday, as a core person, used the word, one word, more than twice or thrice. And uh, that was pressure. I don't know whether you realize or not, but he was using the word pressure more than once. Uh, for me, while interacting or creating some new projects for students, I, I think this word is the 20th century word. Pressurize the students and they will perform well. In the 21st century, we, we need to make change this, their experience a delightful experience. We need to make studies delightful for them. If you make studies delightful for them, they will have interest. They they are already motivated. My mentor in this college, uh, there are few of them. He told me, Hamza, they are motivated. Uh, lots of people say that they're not motivated. Even Dr. Khalid. Uh, Abura mentioned that they are motivated, man. They, are, they come to the class every single day. Early in the morning, 8 o'clock, they come in the class. They are motivated, that's why they came in the class. Okay? And first 15, 20 minutes as an instructor, as a facilitator or a mentor, that's the most engaging uh, time I, that I have. I need to be energetic, I need to be enthusiastic first 20 minutes with them. To make sure that I deliver the maximum so with them. So I think uh, you, you did not uh, understand the context of the English as the word trade and keep an exercise if I'm right. Because he's not talking about just pushing the students to, to, to do it. 
I'm speaking with the students in Montana. Naturally, it will be under pressure. How am I going to do it? How am I going to start it? What? I agree. I agree 100 percent. I agree 100 percent with you. This is the pressure we've got. The competition and everything. I agree 100 percent. I agree. I agree 100 percent. The thing is with management, uh, we people, uh, we actually change the words. We can. We make. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm changing the the words itself. Delightful, but delightful. He, the way I understand, it was slightly different than what he's mentioned later on. Peer pressure, the competition thing at that time. Anyway, so we may, we, you, if you want to pressurize them, don't use the word pressure. Okay. So uh, I thought that way. Make it delightful. That's what I'm saying. When you're saying student-centric, it is changing. Creativity, it's changing. We need to move on there from there. Poems. Poems, yeah. yeah. Uh, poems and songs. OK. So uh, uh, I don't know. I, I forgot what I was mentioning. Uh, now, sorry. <laughs> Last thing. Uh, Sometimes in my class, uh, uh, there are many classes actually. There are many classes when I actually only sit on, on the side of the table and I just speak on motivation, on their problems, on their talk, many things. They come to me as well. Some students come to me, I had an accident, blah, blah, blah. This happened and uh, try to console them as a counselor. It's very important. And of course, you learn from each other. Uh, recently, I learned a lot from Dr. Khalid, the dean himself. Uh, last semester, he taught one course, and he used one of the papers. The final exam paper was astonishing in a way that it was very simple for fourth year students. The English of that paper was very simple, but the good point uh, in the exam paper, when the students see the questions, they did not ask him what this word means, what this word means. What is the meaning of alternative or what is the meaning of context? Dr. Basil was there and he appreciated Dr. R. Khaled immediately. Your paper was the best paper. I wasn't relating, I, I heard from Dr. Basil. And I, I thought that uh, because the difficult words were there, but in brackets the meaning was written. See, the difficult words were there, but in brackets Dr. Khaled actually put the meaning as well. So the chance of asking them was reduced. Uh, but it was a simplistic English. Our students, especially in the male side uh, and few in the female side, their English language is not that strong. We have to accept it. So we need to use English which is understandable. Easily uh, they can understand. So that's, uh, I think so, uh, five minutes? I'm ending almost. So again, with the participation, keeping in mind, interaction means participation. Now, Dr. Arshad, uh, my hero, yesterday's hero, uh, uh, his talk summarized very nicely by Dr. Adnan yesterday. Uh, we talked for two minutes and he summarized, he gave me, I'm sorry, his talk was basically on one word. So, Dr. Adnan's, uh, because, uh, and his talk was basically on, okay, student comes from the, the topic, student interaction, but was on motivation. And last night, Mr. Shabir also mentioned the same thing. Uh, so, so, interaction for me, as I, I define myself, is about participation. Okay. So if uh, if you take points from this uh, talk, uh, very good. If not, again, it's up to everyone else. Uh, thank you very much for listening patiently. And thank you very much. If you have any questions. Yes, Dr. Adam. Uh,
Yes. Uh, you think uh, you stopped using uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah, how do you think? Uh, you encourage your students to use them. After the class, yes. Not <laughs> encouragement for them to use after the class. Twitter, and at the same time, you stopped uh, using PowerPoint. How I differentiate that? Now, with PowerPoint. Uh, How do you deliver the course? Yeah. And then two, you are talking about interaction? Yes. There are so many means of interacting with the students. You can use the PowerPoint to interact with them. And this is one of the best ways that is used to all of us. Uh, now we are going back to the uh, story, fifth century. Yeah. Not fifth century. Okay. Using just a smartphone. Yes. Uh, there, there is always. No, it's not wrong. <laughs> okay, now uh, I was ima I was expecting this question from Dr. Adam that uh, if I do not use PowerPoint, what's the reason behind it? Uh, and it's like the latest for him, it's kind of a, one of the latest equipment that one has to use for interaction. Our students at the boys' side, uh, can I have just one minute? Uh, our students at the boys' side, when they come in the class, uh, normally they bring in their car keys, their smartphones, and their dark glasses. Okay. Normally, three things are with them all the time when they come in the classroom. Car keys, smartphones, and dark glasses. And they put in front of the tables, and they look like this. Uh, in the female side, I mentioned many times it's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an, uh, I am I think that because in the female side it's a dark, our side is light, so it's like a, a stage show going on. Uh, it's like a cinema, they're sitting in a cinema and they just have to watch us and do nothing. Uh, just watching, watching, watch, because they know end of the day, PowerPoint will be on Blackboard and they will ask me at end of the semester, is it enough to pay, pay from the PowerPoint? Is it enough? I have heard this question many times. Is it enough to prepare from PowerPoint? I'm not saying that it can apply in accounting or finance, but in management, uh, we do use lots of things. People, students can actually do it from PowerPoint. Anyways, so in my class, when I actually, I, I use whiteboard, and I tell them there are three portions of whiteboard here, and I use inch by inch. Whatever I'm writing is your one slide. Center is your second slide. Another third portion is your third slide. And I rub immediately. Few of the students actually take pictures. One student I remember, each class is taking picture of my whiteboard. I use whiteboard not by writing paragraphs, but diagrams mostly. I explain things in diagrams, flowcharts, even in management. I use figures, diagrams. Uh, I use cartoons as well. Sometimes I do drawing. Okay, thank you very much.